So we leave the hose five feet long with the banjo end pre-crimped. By leaving the hose long, you can route it exactly where you want to route it. So we're going to do a, a test uh, fit and, get, and mark the length of where we're going to cut the hose by uh, connecting this to the hydro boost first, routing this to the pump, mark it and cut it. So first the, uh, the one end is connected to the hydro boost. We route the hose where we want it and then mark it with a felt pin. Cut the hose and then install the reusable hose end that uses the ferrule crush leaf. So now we're going to route the hose to the pump. Banjo bolts just uh, set in there just to hold the hose. We're going to route it. Stay away from the exhaust and the spark plug wires, of course. Okay, now we've got the length of the hose marked with my finger. I'll mark it with a felt pen. That's going to be our cut mark. Before we connect the line, we have to install this adapter from the Ford power steering pump thread to a standard AN fitting. Once we put that in, then uh, we'll put the swivel on there that allows us to line up the new hose into the hydro boost. Okay, so the uh, kind of one of the uh, trickier parts of this installation is connecting the reusable hose in onto the Teflon brake stainless hose. So what I want to do, first of all, remove the nut and push it over the hopefully unfrayed stainless hose without poking our fingers. So we're going to run that up past our, our mark that we put on with the felt pen. We're going to put the hose in the vise without crushing it, but just gently squeezing it so it'll hold. We're going to put a little tape on the stainless to help keep it from fraying. Okay, we have to use a fine tooth hacksaw or cutoff blades even better, but we're using a hacksaw to cut on the mark. And now the next step, we remove the tape. Okay, the brass ferrule, the crush sleeve, fits only over the Teflon tubing, not the stainless. So it has to be wiggled in around the stainless and pushed in square so that the tubing seats all the way into the bottom of the ferrule. So in this case, we actually have to open up the stainless a little bit. And get the ferrule in there. tubing is round and work the ferrule over the end of the nylon. Okay, now we've got it started. What we have to do is use the end of a bench or a vise and make sure that the ferrule 
pushed all the way. Make sure that the, the Teflon tubing is pushed all the way to the end of the of the, the ferrule. You kind of want to clean the, the edge out. You can use a round punch or arrow clip makes a special tool to make sure that Teflon is, is round. Now we're going to push the, uh, the hose end on. That'll be pushed all the way to the bottom. Okay, now we, we push the, uh, the end of the tubing over the end of the hose end. We push it on tight using a bench or a vise to seat it completely down. All right, now with, with this uh, type of tubing, you do not cut away the end of the stainless. We just push the nut right over it. Screw it on down. Tighten the nut. Okay, I put the, uh, the hose in in the vise and then tighten the nut up to it. Down. We don't want to tighten the nut all the way down against the other nut as that will crush the, the olive sleeve. We want to leave about a thumbnail thickness between the two nuts. Here's the completed line cut to length. Holes in ready to screw on the pump. Banjo in ready. So let's install this. It goes from the pump into the accumulator side of the hydro boost. That's the inlet port. Swivels <clears throat> allow us to twist the line wherever direction we need to go. Banjo bolt takes the copper gasket on each side of the banjo. We'll leave it loose for now until we get everything tight uh, and we'll tighten everything all up at once. Okay, now we're ready to install the second hose. This is the, the pressure hose that goes from the outlet of the hydro boost down to the steering rack to provide the pressure into the rack. So we have to um, mark that down or drop it down the frame and mark it from underneath. So this is the, uh, the second line from the hydro boost to the steering rack. Okay, now we're ready to connect the hose from the hydro boost into the rack. Now, as you can see on this particular car, the lines going into the rack are very difficult to access to remove and put our fitting in. So what we're going to do is uh, this car, having had to supercharged V8 put in it that has a custom hose. It's an arrow quip hose. So our mission here is to cut the arrow quip hose, put a new end on it, and then connect it to our Teflon hose. We're going to cut the hose right here. We 
reason that hose is so difficult to cut, it has all the uh, stainless wire braiding inside the hose, even though it's covered with uh, cloth. Okay, now we're going to mark this hose and cut it. We're going to put the reusable end on this hose arrow clip style on this hose and then connect them with a dash six male male fitting. Just to replay this again, we'll uh, open this up. We've already put the nut on. This is the new hose end for the AeroClip hose. We're going to join the two types of hose with the male male dash six coupler. And that'll take us from the stainless to the AeroClip hose that's on the rack. We're ready to drop this down to the bottom of the car and connect it to the rack. The second hose comes out of the hydro boost, which goes down to feed the pressure into the rack. Okay, these are the AeroClip fittings. We're going to adapt this new end onto the existing AeroClip hose, and then we'll connect it to our stainless hose. So this is the part. It's a little tricky to get these things on there. On an air equipped line, this part of the nut is the left hand thread, so it has to be screwed down over the hose first. Then we start this end into the rubber part of the hose and then screw it in.